A and B. Rishi, everything, all the options are mechanisms for anemia development in chronic anemia failure. Iron deficiency anemia is seen in. So, which among the following conditions will result in iron deficiency? That's a question. Okay. So, it's CRF, it's straightforward. That as now we saw the mechanism. So, it is there. Bill rod 2 operation. Will it be? So, for the answer, this you should know the site of absorption, major micro macronutrients. So, where iron gets absorbed from? Proximal duodenum. Where folic acid gets absorbed from? Dejanum. Where B12 gets absorbed from? Helium. And if you say helium, it's a wrong answer. You have to be specific terminally because helium is 4.3 meters. So, you shouldn't say helium. Just hope I this uh, terminal ileum. So in build of two surgery, what happens is U and Y group is I think I have no, I haven't got the picture. Okay. So Ru and Y surgery. So your proximal jejunum remains detached. So uh, jejunum is and uh, duodenum jejunum doesn't get connected, so they don't absorb it. So naturally expect B12, sorry, iron folic acid deficiency. Okay, not just iron, it's folic acid also. Hookworm infection, it's straightforward. Select group, for this you should know the answers of, so I, I mean pathogens of celiac group. Few points here, we have, I think we have an MCQ on the celiac group, we discussed much over there. So celiac group, it is what type of disease it is? It's an inherited malabsorption syndrome. What is the HLA associated with celiac group? So, not like everyone develops such malabsorption. When we exposed to gluten, not everyone gets it. Who gets it? Who has genetic susceptibility? What is this, what genes? Certain HLA. What HLA? HLA DQ2, HLA DQ8. Note it down. Again, it's a must know stuff under this topic. HLA DQ2 and DQ8. When patients who have HLA DQ2 and DQ8, they when they consume gluten, they will mount a strong immune response. Again, it's an autoimmune disease, right? Not against uh, own tissue to the foreign tissue, okay, foreign uh, product. So they mount an immune response this way. So which part of the intestine, which part of the GIT gets exposed to the gluten? The proximal part. So your duodenum, jejunum gets a brunt of the disease. So naturally. Uh, all this duodenum vision lining will go off. So naturally you get iron folic acid deficiency. That's the bottom line. So we will see the um, much uh, more points for select through later. Carcinoma cecum. What is the connection between carcinoma cecum and deficiency? So it's a common principle, right? So when you come across a middle age or, or some few years before, it was mentioned as uh, when you come across old man and an old person, old man, old male with iron deficiency, workup is GIT. Now it has become, when we come across middle aged or old aged males with iron deficiency, they don't have reasons to become iron deficient. Their hormones protected. And for females, menstruation make them anemic in most cases. So if they, unless there is any bleeding, you have to work up. Because rule out the possibility of GI bleeding is sense. The Purpose is to rule out the possibility of carcinoma colon, maybe micro bleeding. So, it's understood. So, CA cecum is again a cause for iron deficiency anemia. The answer is everything can cause iron deficiency anemia. So, the following lung carcinoma shows hypersecretory granules. The question itself is wrong. It's not, no, it's nothing called hypersecretory granules. What it is? Online kids, what type of granules can be seen in some type of not one type of uh, lung carcinoma. Neurosecretory granules. It's not just in uh, lung carcinoma. Neuro in the sense, this is present in neuroendocrine tumors. That's all. Any neuroendocrine tumor you come across will have neurosecretory granules. What is the method of detecting the presence of neurosecretory granules? Electro microscopy. So, electro microscopy will tell us the presence of neurosecretory granules. Right? So, which among the following? So, which will, which is a neuroendocrine tumor? Which is a neurosecretory? Neuroendocrine tumor. So, this one. 
had options, had cost, and you all would have uh, started with chosen. So, small cell carcinoma lung is a neuroendocrine tumor. Fine. So, it's a spectrum. Good, Raj. Uh, small cell carcinoma uh, lung. So, it's a spectrum. What is the spectrum of neuroendocrine lesions in lungs? So now, it has been what has been given in uh, expressions for some of the following questions also incomplete. Now, it has expanded. They are something called as dip neck. Write it down. D I P N E C H. Okay. Because recent terms, all the more reason for them to appear in the exams. That's why. To complete the spectrum, you should know all these things. So, dip neck in a sense diffuse idiopathic neuroendocrine cell hyperplasia. The question is about neuroendocrine cell rich lesions, not tumors. So, this includes dip neck also. Followed by tumorlets. Tumorlets in lung means proliferation of neuroendocrine cells. And then comes Typical carcinoid. Then comes atypical carcinoid. And then comes small cell carcinoma lung followed by large cell carcinoma lung. So all these are your small uh, all these are your neuroendocrine lesions of the lung. So all these will have neurosecretory granules. Fine. So the answer is small cell carcinoma lung. Yes, Raga, you are correct. Small cell carcinoma lung. So true about veganous granulomatosis. Now so, veganous granulomatosis, what type of category this veganous granulomatosis belongs to? We will stop with this question, we will break for lunch, then we will reach an after lunch break. So, what category of disease this veganous granulomatosis belongs to? That's what we discussed, ANCA. Okay, it's not immune complex, it's ANCA. So, what ANCA? CNK. So, we had a patient, you know, like uh, he had destroyed face. It was very pathetic and every time he was referred by clinicians as CA maxilla with fungi pigma. CA maxilla, fungi, that's how it, he was referred. And they will refer a bi take a biopsy and what we could see finally was granuloma necrosis. So every time we reported, we could see only granuloma and uh, good mahraga. I'm happy even in lunch session I could see a handful of children, thanks to you all, making my day. So, we, what we could report was only necrosis and granuloma. We will just say, okay, maybe they wouldn't have taken a representative sample. So, we will just ask for a repeat biopsy. They will just again ask you, so they will just uh, uh, blast us in the behind. And then, like these pathologists are used to, they will not find anything. They will take a re biopsy. And again, the same findings we have given. We didn't see, the, we never happened to see the patient unless we go reach out them in the wards. So, once after some three times of biopsy, when the patient had come to see the, get the report, I happened to see the patient. It was so pathetic to see the patient. Whole hemi face was destroyed. It was very, very bad. That time, you know, like, uh, and we share, I mean, we, st our department is next to micro department. We share this common corridor. I just uh, requested him, explained him with patient because he was frustrated naturally because of his disease and because of the repeated getting tackling between the OPDs. And that time, you know, like, uh, I just I had some doubt and his urine report also said uh, RBC 3 plus. This microscope, urine microscopy had RBC caster. So, it clearly indicated hematuria. That is because this lesion was predominant that was getting underdiagnosed, that was missing out the importance. So, something strike me. I don't say that I was sharp, others missed. No, it happens so that's all. So, I just uh, requested him, convinced him for another blood sample and gave him for ANCA. The ANC and ANCA came positive. So, actually, case of wickedness. The bottom line is the lesson learned from this Anka. Veganus can be so destructive. Veganus can result in acute renal failure. It can be that he actually died because of his acute renal failure. He, was, he has developed crescentic global nephritis at that time. Then, for the completion sake, for the PG learning sake, his renal biopsy was taken, which showed beautiful results. I'm very sorry to say, at times there are certain findings of pathologists to like. We don't, we won't be happy for the patient's condition, but certain findings will really delight us. So, beautiful crescents were there. This is actually a case of veganus. The findings of veganus in the, it was, earlier days it was called as lethal midline granuloma because the midline was affected. So, you usually have parietal perforation and all. So, this usually involves the na nasal cavity, sinuses. It will involve the paired organs and the midline structures. That's what it is. So, lungs, lung cavity inflammation to the lungs will be there. Kidneys will be affected. So, and midline heart, any organ can be affected. Most commonly, the paranasal sinuses and the lungs will be affected. So, involves the lung, involves the nose, kidney. What is the treatment for veganus? So, the 
physicians are waiting for the diagnosis to be cancelled because that's what the clinical picture was. I don't underestimate their knowledge, not at all. But they thought it must be malignant. So they were waiting to treat him with chemotherapy. But what is the treatment actually? You can treat it with cytotoxic drugs and say, suppose with bad prognosis. You can't expect a dramatic response and get back all the reasons.